Good evening, everyone. It's 530, and we will be getting this special meeting of the Santa Monica City Council underway. Um, we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Council Member Winterer, will you lead us, please? I'll make two times in a row. My pleasure. You got it right last time. So. <laughs> All righty. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Moreno? Here. Councilmember Helmerich? Here. Councilmember McKeown? Here. Councilmember Winter? Here. Councilmember Hara? Here. Mayor Pro Tem O'Day? Here. And Mayor Davis. Here. So we have a full council this evening. Uh, can we call the first item? It's a closed session, conference, I'm sorry, existing litigation, and it's Pico Neighborhood Association and Maria Loya versus the City of Santa Monica, and you have 10 requests to speak. All right. We will begin with the public comment. For those of you who've not been here before, I will call out three to four names. We ask that you line up along the wall to your left so that we don't lose time in between comments. Uh, the first four people are Chris McLeod, Denise Barton, Linda Lancaster, and Kevin Shankman. Oh, sorry, I'll turn your mic on. I apologize. Uh, good evening, City Council and staff. Uh, the CVRA case, the City Attorney's Office has been churning out large amounts of false and misleading information into the public arena to discredit the CVRA case. This adds to the fact that the case was won the moment it was lodged with the court. Dragging, dragging this case out for three years is the only tool that you have had to fight with, and that time is, has run out. You defend an old, out-of-date voting system that was created by tyrants and racists as if you own it. Perhaps you do own it. Seventy years of discrimination is your legacy into the history books. You show your absolute disregard for the public by wasting millions of dollars of public funding that is de desperately needed elsewhere to keep your asses in council seats, at the same time losing the public's trust. Appeal this case don't appeal it we will have district voting thank you thank you mr mcleod miss barton good evening and what grounds do you plan on appealing the district voting case you lost the poway case fell through and all of your other arguments have been found to be illegal so would this action show even more what criminals you are now let's look again at some of your contradicting statements about the district voting case you lost starting with one of the most appalling with the city stating that just the district system may work well in larger cities like Los Angeles, but dividing up Santa Monica's 8.3 square mile community would pit neighborhood against neighborhood. Yet in another statement from the city it clearly acknowledges that cities with fewer than 10,000 residents have been sued or threatened to be regarding district voting, with most municipalities settling before litigation. So what makes Santa Monica any different than any of these other municipalities? Because of my research, I found no justification for it. Which would bring us back to your argument that the city has had at-large elections since 1946. But didn't the court find it deliberately discriminates against minority voters? Ending with the most appalling contradiction, being the city council saying that it wants residents' input on the districts, when in reality you tell your lawyers that it's the stakeholders' input you really want. So on what grounds do you plan on appealing the district voting case you lost? Oh, and by the way, how do you plan to pay the residents back for the probably over $10 million by now of city funds you've used to pursue this conflict of interest for you while in elected office? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barton. Ms. Lancaster? Linda Lancaster, good to see you. I was here last month when you were picking out our newest council member, and at that time when I spoke, I mentioned the elephant in the room, which was this districting lawsuit. So I'm glad that you're taking the time to hear about it tonight. I made it a point to inform myself about this lawsuit and I attended three days off the trial to hear testimony. I also attended on December 7th and I heard the attorneys that you have hired answer questions that the judge provided. I was amazed that the city never ever considered submitting a district map. They felt and actually said it in the law, the courtroom that day that they wouldn't do that. 
till after an appeal was filed and they lost the appeal. One thing I learned about going to a courtroom is what hearsay is. And I heard what was said. It's not hearsay, what I'm telling you now. So I am against you going for appeal. And I don't like hearing that the districts drawn are gerrymandered. They can't be gerrymandered if there was no districts before. But when I look at the map, I see that four out of the seven districts pretty much represent what we have in this city. Noma, Northeast Neighbors, Sunset Park, Pico Neighbors, and Ocean Park. Northeast Neighbors expands into my area, Mid-City, and I'll be joining them. Right now, there's nobody from Mid-City that's been on the council in about 25 years. So I think districting would work. So please, don't do an appeal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lancaster. Mr. Shankman, you have two minutes donated by Mr. Steve Lancaster. Can he raise his hand, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I doubt I'll need the extra time. Um, so I, uh, I wasn't sure I would come here this evening. Um, and in fact, on my way out of my house, my wife said, why are you going to waste your time? They're not going to listen to you. And she's probably right. Um, thinking back, this council hasn't really listened to anyone on this issue. Uh, and, and, and somehow, you know, our communication has turned to trading barbs in a newspaper. And that's not, that's not good for anyone. And I, I want you to think back, though, for the five council members who, who were on this council back in 2015. And recall, in November 2015, we laid out our case to you. You could have changed to district elections at that point, and it would have cost you exactly zero dollars. You didn't listen to me back then. The 92 Council didn't listen to the Charter Review Committee, didn't listen to Dr. Morgan Kauser. There have been plenty of opportunities to change your approach, to come to the table. There were many, many occasions where resolutions that were far more favorable to the city than what would be available today. We're on the table. You didn't want to listen to anyone back then. Now, a court tells you this system is illegal. And I have, I'm under no illusion that you'll listen to the court either. So it's become about money. And, you know, I, I fully expect, based on what has been written in the newspaper, probably by staff, and, and city council members put their name to it, that, uh, that you'll appeal. And that doesn't bother me one bit. Because the truth of the matter is, you're going to end up in the same place. You read that statement of decision, and any honest attorney would tell you, you do not stand a chance of winning on appeal. So what's the result of an appeal? You're going to end up in the same place, except Mr. Skolnick and Mr. Boutros, fine attorneys, they are, will make some more money, and I'll make some more money. So either way, you know, I'm sure you'll go back into your council chambers and you'll, you'll uh, come out with a prepared statement about how you're fighting for the voting rights. Somehow being against the California Voting Rights Act is, is fighting for voting rights. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. But uh, I'm sure that's what you'll do, and, and uh, we'll keep on doing what we do, and we'll continue doing this dance. Uh, but it's not going to get any better for this city. Um, I have a slim glimmer of hope that maybe some of you will, will realize that at some point, uh, and we're here to talk with you when you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shankman. I'll call a few more names. Yolanda Lewis. Oh, I'm sorry. Joel Corey, who's having two minutes dedicated by Yolanda Lewis, who I see in the audience there. Tricia Crane, Taffy Patton, and Lucky Basiri. Good evening, Mr. Corey. Good evening. I had a presentation that I was hoping that I could, the clerk could pull up. So I'm here to urge you to continue the appeal. And I want to just point out that the evidence is very clear throughout the state that lawsuits like this do not increase Latino representation, they decrease it. And I'm going to point to the Palmdale case that was prosecuted by Mr. Shankman as an example. In Palmdale, after they moved to district elections, one Latino was elected on the city council. You can see him in the center of the photo. 
one and only one, which is outrageous because 52% of that population is Latino. There should be two or three, yet there's only one because they're all packed into one tight voting district. We can skip to the next, uh, skip over the next slide. I, oh. I promised my wife I wouldn't say anything rude about Mr. Paris and Mr. Shankman, so you can Google him and look, look them up for yourself, and you can see their dubious history when it comes to protecting voting rights. But I can tell you this, Mr. Shankman just admitted it, this is about money. When Palmdale settled, they had to write a check to those gentlemen for $4.1 million. My guess is that if you capitulate, they're going to be asking for 5 or $6 million for this lawsuit. It costs far more to settle this lawsuit, to drop the, the lawsuit, than it does to fight the lawsuit. Based on my litigation experience, my expectation is it's probably going to be $100,000 or so to file the appeal, to file the brief, and to argue the appeal. If you capitulate like Palmdale did, Mr. Shankman, Mr. Paris, get a check upwards of $5 million. If we win the appeal, they get nothing. We get to keep our $5 million, and we get to use it for valuable things around our community. Things like the parks that have been renovated and built in the Pico neighborhood in the last 10 years. I live, in the, I live adjacent to the Pico neighborhood. All of them have been built or renovated in the last 10 years. Or the affordable housing that's pictured here that's in the Pico neighborhood. I know there's hundreds of units that have been built by the city. I know because I was on the rent control board. We protect thousands of tenants in the Pico district. Or we can use the money to help support the Edison Language Academy, which is pictured, which has turned into the most in-demand school in the entire Santa Monica School District. Moving on, we could also use that money to build another Pico Library, something that was just built in the last 10 years in the Pico neighborhood. And something else about the Pico Library. When I went to the public meetings that took place, I would see four or five council people there every meeting. The reason why is because the voters got to express their will and the council people wanted to implement their will. If there's one district and only one district representative, do you really think that library would have ever been built? Why would a council person from north of Montana or downtown allocate one single dollar for something that's outside of their district? If we can go on. The other myth is that somehow you don't represent the Latinos that are spread throughout our city. The other myth is that apparently, according to what Mr. Della Torre has been writing in the papers, Mr. Vasquez and Ms. Hara are not Latino enough to represent the interests of the city. I've read Mr. Della Torre's comments. His comments are that only he can make Santa Monica great again, okay. which is ridiculous. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Ms. Crane? Good evening. Um, I'd like to, before I make my comment, I'd like to correct uh, Mr. Corey's disinformation tonight. Palmdale elected its first Latino Democrat ever in its first district election. So please note that that was incorrect. And as misleading as everything we're seeing coming out of these halls these days. My name is Tricia Crane. I chair Northeast Neighbors City Recognized Neighborhood Organization. And I'm resident of District 4 in the new districting map. And I see I already have neighbors who understand this is where we're headed. So it's very exciting. In November, soon after the court issued its tentative ruling in this case, Northeast Neighbors asked City Council not to appeal, but instead to begin the districting process. Jerry, Jerry I'd like to speak. We received no response from anyone on the council. Tonight, our board and members make the same request, drop the appeal. No such appeal has ever succeeded in California. The threat of an appeal at this point amounts to reckless and costly foot dragging. 
money you are spending, which seems to be all that many are interested in, is you're spending it on legal fees, and it would be better spent on addressing the degradation of the quality of life in our neighborhoods, a degradation that has taken place under your watch. When this case began, you received a letter from the African American Caucus of the California Democratic Party, a letter written by the chairman, the Honorable Darren Parker. I'll close with a quote from Mr. Parker in his letter. In Santa Monica, a city that prides itself on progressive values, the city council members should be able to look past their perceived self-interests and finally bring the city's election system into conformity with those progressive values and the law. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Patton, before you begin, I'm gonna call a few more names. Uh, Janet McLaughlin, um, Armin Melconians, Elaine golden Geeler, and Stanley Epstein. Welcome. Thank you. Taffy Patton, I live in District 4. Okay, it's not your fault that previous councils rejected recommendations to dump the large system because it was racist. That's not your fault. Of course, you knew about those recommendations and decided to keep the same racist voting system. Then, two years ago, PICO sued the city for discrimination. You hired a hotshot expert in polarized, racist, voting. She confirmed that PICO had a solid case, but you buried that report as work product. You hid that report from the judge and from residents. Transparency? Progressive values? Were they inconvenient? Anyway, they were gone. Any wonder why residents want district elections? For two years now, you've been using resident money, our money, millions and millions of dollars to pay outside fancy pants attorneys to retain your seats. I know they're fancy pants attorneys because I went to the courthouse and saw them all lined up in $2,000 suits with puffy silk red gizmos in their pockets. Guys, you lost the case. It's time to fire the fancy pants attorneys with their fa fancy puffy gizmos. If you want to continue sitting up there, get yourself elected in your own districts. Stop using residents' money as your own personal ATMs to stay in power. Drop the appeal. Thank you. Have a very nice evening. All right, Ms. McLaughlin. Uh, I believe Lucky was next. Oh, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Lucky Baseri. I apologize. Good evening. Good evening, council members. <clears throat> I am here tonight to urge you all to not, to, to not appeal. You, by some estimates, you guys have spent over, tw over $20 million on, on, this, uh, on this lawsuit. <clears throat> if, you continue fire, if you continue fighting this, then, then, many, then, uh, then the city's budget will suffer badly. As well as I believe that that district that that uh, at that the at large election system does does not represent every everyone in the city, so I, I believe if you guys if you guys if you guys want to sit up here, you guys should do it from you guys should try, you should you guys should get voted from the people in your district, and not people who you guys may have paid. Or, you, or, or the corrupt developers who line your pockets. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baseri. Ms. McLaughlin. Good evening, council members. Um, we ran into then uh, Mayor Wincher at the Christmas tree lighting event this past December. Really lovely event. And um, we had a nice pleasant conversation then my son went to see Santa Claus <clears throat> and much to my surprise he told Santa Claus all I want for Christmas is for you to not appeal or for City Council to not appeal the verdict in the district elections lawsuit which left Santa Claus perplexed so he asked him to explain 
And uh, I realized how strongly my son felt about it that everybody deserves fair representation. The Pico neighborhood, Ocean Park, Sunset Park, everybody has a voice that needs to be heard. And even though he's young, he felt so strongly about it that he wanted to come and talk to you about it tonight. So Santa said he couldn't make any promises and we're um, still waiting for that late Christmas present. And, and it's really my sincerest hope that you council members will be his hero and you'll do the right thing and you will decide to not appeal this, the verdict in this lawsuit because it's, um, it's not winnable, it's, it's not um, the judge ruled that it's in violation of the California Fair Voters' Rights Act. And I believe that whoever, it, whoever feels strongly about this and doesn't vote to appeal will be elected on their own merits in the district elections. Thank you, council members, for your time. Thank you. Mr. Melconians? And then Mr. Rubin, you're after Mr. Epstein. Hi, council members. Armin Melconians, uh, City of Santa Monica resident. Let's face it, we're here today because of the Brown Act. You guys are meeting. Uh, you have to discuss the um, results of the CVRA lawsuit, and we have public input because of the Brown Act. But the reality is that this public input means nothing. Um, I don't expect you guys to listen to anything that we ha in the public have to say about this issue. There's been a trial. It's been going on for three years in the court. There was a six-week trial. You guys are very familiar with it. You guys have all been deposed as part of the case. And as part of that court process, you lost. And that's okay. But it's time to do the right thing. It's time to stop spending the city's money, taxpayer money, to protect your own power in your own seats. It's time to obey the law. The only person you will listen to is each other and your attorney in closed chambers. Just remember, your attorney stands to gain more money by filing an appeal. Look at what's real. Look at what's not real. Face what's in front of you and make that decision in the best possible way that you can. The only thing that I ask is I request that although this decision is made behind closed doors, please make it public as to which council member ends up voting for an appeal and which council member ends up voting to not appeal. I think the residents of the city of Santa Monica, after having their taxpayer money spent on this case, deserve those answers. We need to know who votes for an appeal to continue fighting this lawsuit and who doesn't. The other thing I ask is please make the amount of money that you've already spent as a lump sum figure public information. It will not give away your trial tactics. The trial is over. It won't give away any tactics in your appeal. That's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. golden Geeler. I don't have much to say because there's not much to say. But this is what my sign says and this is what I want to say. I hope that you'll consider loosening your 40-year death grip on power and stop fighting the inevitable by finally supporting district elections. It's time. 40 years is long enough. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Epstein? Thank you. Stan Epstein. Uh, uh, there's no point in adding to the very large number of people that are against the appeal. I don't want to discuss that. But there is something that came up just yesterday in the daily press, which I do want to discuss. Our oldest and our newest members uh, pulled, uh, sent a letter, which is absolutely shocking, disgraceful. And I think our two lawyers on the council ought to find it that way and ought to be very upset about it. It is not uh, Kevin Shankman who brought this lawsuit about. It is the legislature of the city of, of the state of California. It's the governor. It's the plaintiffs who represent uh, a, a uh, neighborhood group. The lawyers don't work for nothing. 
the law provides that they get legal fees in an amount set by a judge when and if they win the case. To blame them is disgraceful. I'm sure that Kevin has hired lots of lawyers with all of his many liberal activities and, and has wanted these lawyers to make a fee. I'm sure that uh, the mayor is, is certainly expects to get a fee for her work just for AT&T, and I'm, sh and I'm su sure that Susan expects to get a fee, as every lawyer expects to get a fee. It is wrong to blame the lawyer. These other people brought this about. A judge decided against it, and it is, it is obviously an attempt to uh, influence the public in later elections, to hate Mr. Shankman, and to make people feel this case had no merit. In addition, about 25 other jurisdictions have said that there should be no case. They've caved in, they've given up, because they know the law is against them. And therefore, with good lawyers on their side and with council members who were going to be thrown out of office in some cases, they decided not to fight it. It wasn't money. It's that, that they were given legal advice that they had no case. And therefore, they gave up. Santa Monica has basically nothing different except they decided to waste $20 million. And by the way, the council Your people- Your time is up, Mr. Epstein. Council people may be, I want to finish the sentence, please. The council people may be asked jointly and severally to pay that $20 million back because they didn't put in an independent person to make the decisions about this case. Okay, thank you. Council, we have four late chits. All right, any objection? Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry, I'm sorry. I put your card away and I totally spaced out. Move to hear Jerry for two, that's right. Oh, all right. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Council Members, City Staff, fellow Santa Monicans. Well, I think, uh, first of all, I'm not a lawyer or a judge, but been around Santa Monica a lot. I think you've been listening to people. I remember the ballot initiative they had years ago. Most people were against districts. It was debated fully then and had a very democratic vote. Personally, I feel just to protect Santa Monica's reputation against some of these outrageous charges of racism. This is a great city that speaks out against racism for the rights of Latinos and blacks and seniors and people with disabilities. We've had a great process. I've run for city council. The city clerk has a, does a great job. We have a fair election. I live in Ocean Park, but I have friends in other would-be districts that might need support. I don't want to have my right taken away to be able to influence and elect people that care about the whole city. There are people that live in one district and spend most of their time in a business in another district. It's outrageous that we would say that you're not doing the most democratic thing possible by appealing. If they would have lost, it would have been outrageous if we would have told them that they shouldn't appeal. There's been so many cases that people thought, well, I don't know if we really have a chance, but it turns out you did because you're on the side of what's right. And I think you're on the side of what's right, and I hope you do appeal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Um, one of the cards got stuck to another, so uh, Marianne LaGuardia, I apologize, but you ended up uh, stuck to someone else, so I had to. That's right, so she's a regular time. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, as somebody who spent several decades litigating cases, I understand that reasonable minds can differ on the merits of a case. And I am sure, uh, and perhaps others disagree with me, that a lot of thought went into whether this case would be fought or whether the case would be settled. That, however, is not the issue before you this evening. It seems to me the case, the decision was made, the case went to trial with A-plus lawyers. In fact, if there were an A-plus-plus, I would give these, the firm of Gibson Dunn and these lawyers in particular, three pluses after it. 
I sat through much of the trial. I thought it was brilliantly litigated by both sides. I thought, that, you know, it was a lawyer's dream to have no depth to the pockets from which you could reach fighting this case. Um, and at the end, after consideration of the experts and the evidence, the city lost. So what do you do now? The grounds on appeal are narrow. Prevailing on appeal, I believe, would be harder than it was to prevail in the lawsuit. And you have a decision to make legally and as part of your fiduciary duties as well. I was quoted in the Wall Street Journal when I was a very young, very brash lawyer. I mellowed a bit over the years as saying the highest and best use of money is paying legal fees. I didn't mean it then, even when I was the direct beneficiary of it. I certainly don't mean it now. I think it's your duty to really consider your chances on appeal versus your fiduciary duty to maintain and use wisely the assets of the city. My own opinion is this would probably be a good time to stop stop not only the case, but vilifying those who brought it. As my mother used to say, when you're in a hole, stop digging. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. LaGuardia. Okay, we now have the four late chits. I'll call out all the names. Zena Josephs, Robert Gomez, Maria Loya, and Myla Rasoli. Oh, Reason, I'm sorry, I apologize. And each speaker will have one minute. It's no fun following Marianne. Uh, speaking only for myself, the idea of appealing this decision reminds me of the saying about throwing good money after bad. Rather than spending more millions on legal fees, you could, one, give some money to the fire department to equip the four new fire engines that have been sitting out in Ontario since last year. Two, you, should give, you could give some money to the police department to hire some more patrol officers. Three, you could give some money to the traffic engineering division to replace the staff that's been taken away from them so they could finish the Sunset Park traffic study that you funded in June 2016 that has still not been completed. Thank you. Mr. Gomez? Good evening. Today I met with uh, Mr. Jared, who's a uh, street maintenance supervisor. And the purpose of my call was to fix potholes. I own the property on 23rd and in Oak Street. And the discussion was around why the deterioration of the alley and the asphalt was, was taking so long to fix. And he said he didn't have money to fix. So I guess the, uh, my question to you as a council is, how do you reconcile the fact that you can't fix basic maintenance, basic roadways, and yet the discussion is around how you're going to spend money, millions of dollars, to litigate something that's already been passed. So when you discuss this, uh, I guess in my mind, how do, you, how do you reach out to the residents and say you don't have money to do basic maintenance and you have money to do this? Thank you. Ms. Loya? Good evening. Um, as you know, I'm one of the plaintiffs that filed this lawsuit. And last week, Judge uh, Yvette Palazuelos uh, submitted her final ruling that stated that the city of Santa Monica not only violated the California Voting Rights Act, but also violated the California Constitution's Equal Protection Clause and stating that you all, that the council intentionally, intentionally created an at-large election system that resulted, uh, that would keep uh, candidates of color from gaining elected office, and that resulted in discrimination, in discrimination and around jobs, around the environment, and around education. But yet, today, we have deniers. You all are denying the fact that there was discrimination that was done against people in the Pico neighborhood, but yet you are going to spend millions of dollars more on an appeal, on an appeal that you will lose. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Loya. Ms. Reason? No clapping. As I think most of you know, we do not allow clapping in the chambers. If you agree with someone, you can raise your hand silently. Well, good evening, Council. I, uh, I came to listen as well as to speak because I, I'm somewhat ambivalent about this. I, I live in what would be District 1. I feel best represented by 
Sue Himmelrich, who would not, who I would not be voting for in the next election, and I've always been very grateful that um, Greg Moreno has always been willing to listen and discuss issues with me. And um, but I, uh, I'm really kind of curious about the claim that if you don't appeal, that it would cost the city an additional four million dollars or five million dollars. This is something that I was not aware of. So I, I'd like to say that I really like the idea of districts for a number of reasons, and so I'm ambivalent, because I like the idea that someone can go and knock on doors and get to, to actually canvas in their own neighborhood and, and ask people for their own vote, because it's impossible for people to, uh, to reach all of the voters in the city. So Thank you, Ms. I'm Reason. ambivalent, and good luck. Uh, we have one more late shit. Peter Borison. Yes, I think we sort of lumped them all together, but yes. The city funded a study from noted expert Karen McDonald, which they have kept private. If it was in their favor, they would have shouted about it. So I'm sure it uh, is damning to the city's case. Um, so and the other question is, why were the city's lawyers three days late in their summary judgment request to council. Uh, if it went to trial, they would make a lot more money. So clearly, they've been leading the city on, telling them that you're going to win this thing, even though they knew you were going to lose. That every time you lose an appeal, your lawyers are going to make more money. Um, so if there had been district elections in 2004, then Maria Lawyer would have won the Pico district. So there is one, at least one concrete case where a Latino represent representation would have been increased by district voting. And um, I guess that's it. So. Thank you, sir. All right, that concludes the public comment. So I will turn to our city attorney and ask if she has an estimate of how long we'll be in closed session. Estimate that we would return at 635. All right, so we will uh, adjourn to closed session and hope to be back by 635. That's right. All right, uh, we will reconvene. I apologize for being late, but we obviously had some serious discussion to be had. So with that, um, I'll turn to the city attorney for a report out on closed session. The item on the closed session agenda tonight is Pico Neighborhood Association versus City of Santa Monica. This litigation began in April 2016 when the Pico Neighborhood Association Advocates for Malibu Public Schools and community member Maria Loya filed a complaint in the Los Angeles County Superior Court. Advocates for Malibu Public Schools later withdrew from the lawsuit and an amended complaint was filed in February 2017. The amended complaint challenged the legality of Santa Monica's at-large election system for the city council, which was adopted by the voters in 1946 as part of the city charter. In the years since the lawsuit was filed, the parties have engaged in extensive briefing, pretrial proceedings, and a seven-week trial. On February 15, 2019, the trial judge adopted the proposed judgment submitted by the plaintiffs and issued that as its final judgment. The judgment holds that Santa Monica's at-large elections for city council seats violate the California Voting Rights Act and the Equal Protection Clause of the California Constitution. It enjoins the city of Santa Monica from holding future at-large elections for city council seats. 
It orders that future elections for city council seats be district-based in accordance with a seven district map drawn by the plaintiff's expert and adopted by the court. It orders the city to hold an election on July 2nd, 2019 for all seven city council seats using this seven district map. It prohibits any person not elected in such a district election from sitting on the city council after August 15th, 2019. And it holds that plaintiffs are entitled to recover reasonable attorney's fees and costs to be paid by the city. During the course of the litigation, the city has contested many of the legal and factual positions taken by the plaintiffs and adopted by the trial court. The city's objections are well documented in public filings available on the city's website. They include the following. With respect to the California Voting Rights Act, the city has argued that the plaintiffs failed to prove that past elections demonstrate racially polarized voting in Santa Monica and failed to prove that the city's at-large election system dilutes Latino voting power. At trial, the city presented evidence to demonstrate that between 2002 and 2016, candidates preferred by Latino voters won at least 70% of the time in Santa Monica City Council races and over 80% of the time in at-large elections that plaintiffs claimed involved racially polarized voting for the school district, community college, and rent control boards. Under the at-large system, Latinos who make up 13.6% of Santa Monica voters have held at least one out of seven, 14% of the city council seats since 2012, and at the time of trial had four out of 19 or 21% of the city's other at-large elected positions on the school district, community college, and rent control boards. The city also contended that plaintiffs failed to show that a move to districts would generate better outcomes for Santa Monica's Latino voters. At trial, the city demonstrated that it is impossible to draw a district in Santa Monica with a voting population that is more than 30% Latino and that no court adjudicating a vote dilution claim has ever ordered the creation of districts where the citizen voting age population of the relevant minority group in the purported remedial district would be this low. In Santa Monica, approximately two thirds of Latino voters live outside the proposed Pico district. In a seven district system, most of these Latino voters would reside in districts with overwhelmingly white majorities and be prevented from organizing together across neighborhoods as they can in the current at-large system. Further, plaintiffs did not dispute that district-based elections would dilute the voting strength of African American and Asian American voters in Santa Monica. With respect to the claim of intentional discrimination, the city presented evidence at trial to show that the transformation of the city's electoral system in 1946 benefited minority voters and garnered the vocal support of leaders of color within the community. The city also contended that claims of intentional discrimination with respect to the 1992 Charter Review Commission proceedings rest on a single statement by a single council member that has been selected from lengthy recordings and significantly misinterpreted. The city also contends that the evidence failed to show that any alternative method of election would have enhanced Latino voting power at any time since 1946. Finally, the city has argued that the trial court's adoption of the, city, of the seven district map drawn by plaintiff's expert disregards the democratic process required by California's election code for drawing district lines. The trial court rejected these arguments by adopting, with a few minor changes, the proposed statement of decision and proposed judgment drafted by plaintiff's counsel. As stated in prior filings, the city contends that in doing so, the trial court left unresolved a number of significant legal issues and that its rulings on both the CVRA and equal protection claims cannot be supported by the facts. Having reviewed the court's orders and consulted with outside counsel, and for the reasons set forth in closed session, the city attorney's office recommends filing an appeal in this case in order to seek appellate review of the many contested legal and factual issues that remain and that have never previously been addressed by the California Courts of Appeal. I further, uh, I want to clarify that as further stated in publicly filed papers, it is the city's position that the filing of an appeal should automatically stay or hold in abeyance the trial court's orders pending review by the Court of Appeal. Should an automatic stay not be entered, the city's attorneys would seek a discretionary stay in order to avoid the time, expense, and uncertainty 
of initiating a new district-based election process that might be halted mid-course by a decision from the Court of Appeal. I further want to clarify two issues that arose in public comment. First, with respect to uh, the investment in this case, it has been made by developing the record at the pretrial and trial stage. An appeal would involve drafting legal briefs and a 30-minute legal argument. Second, were the city not to appeal an action in this, uh, were not, not to file an appeal in this action, the court's judgment would take effect in full, including the imposition of the seven district map drawn and the order that the city pay the plaintiff's attorney's fees. Thus, to restate, having reviewed the court's orders and consulted with outside counsel, and for the reasons set forth in closed session, the city attorney's office now recommends that counsel approve the filing of an appeal in this case. Okay, and before we uh, go to that, I just do want to thank everyone who came out tonight um, and took time out of their busy Thursday evening to speak. It's an unusual night for a council meeting. But I also want to thank my colleagues who came out and gave serious consideration to the issues that have been enumerated by the city attorney and by the public in its comments. So we're grateful for having the ability and opportunity to have that kind of discussion and consider all the issues before us. That point, uh, we have the recommendation from the city attorney. I move the staff recommendation. Second. All right, we have a motion. I want to restate it so everyone is clear. It is a motion to file a notice of appeal in the matter of uh, Pico Neighborhood Association versus the city of Santa Monica. Um, moved by McEwen, seconded by O'Day. Is that correct? All right, uh, Ms. Anderson Warren, I think we'll have a roll call vote. Councilmember Morena. Yes. Councilmember Hemmerich? Yes. Councilmember McKeown? Yes. Councilmember Winter? Yes. Councilmember Hara? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem O'Day? Yes. And Mayor Davis? Yes. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. And I believe with that, since that was the only matter on the agenda, uh, do we have any requests for adjournments? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That wasn't what we were talking about. I believe we don't have any requests for adjournment. So we are adjourned until next Tuesday, which is February 26th, for a regularly scheduled meeting of the City Council. Thank you. <laughs>